Question five. Each year, Jack enters a ballot for a concert ticket. Ticket. The probability that he will win a ticket in any particular year is 0.27. The final problem is that the first time he wins a ticket is on these numbers of attempts. This is classic geometric distribution, isn't it? Because he's going to keep trying until he gets the ticket. So X. I, I, have you noticed? I, I am keen that you should do this. That if you spot it's a distribution, start by saying what distribution it is. So X is a geometric distribution with probability of success being 0.27. So the probability of it being the eighth attempt. Hopefully we know how the geometric distribution works. Eighth attempt means we have seven failures followed by a success on the eighth. So that is, probability of x being eight is seven failures, one minus 0.27 to the seven times our final glorious success. And that, if we work that out, gives us Naught point. Now this is this is an interesting thing to talk about. Naught point naught two nine eight. Those are significant figures. Some of you hopefully are feeling slightly aggrieved because some of you did the perfect working out and put naught point naught three. And I marked that wrong. Quite correctly. Naught point naught three is not good enough so close to being the right answer, but you need to give your answers to three significant figures, <laughs> and even though it's a tiny distance away from that, it's not to three significant figures, so I'm sorry you wouldn't get the mark for that. Okay. Um, part B. After his eighth attempt. Right, we're doing another thing here, thinking about... What does, that, what does that mean? That's actually, the after the eighth attempt, it's the quite easy one, isn't it, with geometric? If you think about how these attempts could work out, he's doing all these number of attempts, there they all are. So after the eighth attempt is that selection and then going on forever, what would it mean for him to do it after the eighth attempt? It would mean that he would have eight consecutive failures. That's that's what needs to happen in order for him to do it sometime after the eighth attempt. So the probability of x being greater than eight, which is what we're asked for, is the probability of eight consecutive failures, which is 0 0.0806. And again, I know it's really, really close, but 0 0.08 is not an acceptable answer, and that would also not get the mark. Okay, 0 0.0806. You did actually get a mark for 0 0.08065. I think it actually is 0 0.0649 or something like that. 46. Okay. <coughs> okay, part, what are we up to? Part 2. Write down an expression for the probability that Jack wins a ticket on exactly two of his first eight attempts and evaluate this expression. Ah, now things have changed. This is no longer a, a geometric distribution, is it? We're now talking about a binomial distribution. Because now we're saying, I'm going to use a different letter again, that there are exactly eight attempts. So n is eight, and the probability of a success is 0.27. And we want to know the probability that he wins on exactly two of his first eight. It doesn't say that he, one of the successes is the eighth, it just says on two of the first eight. So we want the probability that y equals eight. Notice equals two, sorry. Notice that the question said, write down an expression for the probability. So it's not enough just to write down the answer at this point, because that doesn't do what the question wants. The question wanted you to write down an expression. So your expression has got to be 8C2. That's two successes. And there would be six failures, and so that's 0.2. It's 0.73, isn't it? 
to the power of 6, or 1 minus 0 0.27 to the power of 6, and that gives you 0 0.309. Biggest. Notice that that line is an essential line in this because it asks you for that expression for the probability. Um, find the probability that Jack wins his third ticket on his ninth attempt and his fourth ticket on his twelfth attempt. Again, it's one of those questions that you need to read a couple of times and think about what is actually going on here. It's an and thing, so you're wanting the probability for the whole lot of this all of this happening, all of this stuff that's going on. We want the third ticket on the ninth attempt and the fourth on the twelfth. Right. Third ticket on the ninth attempt, fourth on the twelfth attempt. So what does that mean actually? Let's pull that apart, think what that would involve. If his third ticket is going to come on exactly the ninth attempt, then the first eight attempts must have contained two successes. So the first thing we had is two in the first eight attempts. Okay, that needs to have happened. Well, that's great, we know that. That is 0 0.309. We then need the ninth to be a success. Okay, the probability of the ninth attempt being a success is 0.27, because all of these attempts are independent, and each attempt has a probability of 0.27. So the ninth attempt on its own being successful is 0.27. Then, we need the third attempt after that to be his fourth ticket, the twelfth attempt, so that's 9, 10, 11, 12, the third attempt has to be a success. So we then have to have third subsequent attempt. That would involve two failures followed by a success. That's the only way that that twelfth one could be his, his fourth successful ticket. So that is 0 0.73 to the 2 times 0.27. And all of this has to happen. It's not all, it's not this or this or this. It's all of this has to happen at exactly the same time, the same turn. It all has to happen together. So for that all to happen, we need 0 0.309 and 0 0.27 and 0.73 squared times 0.27. That's the calculation that we need because they all need to happen together. If we multiply them all together, it gives a point zero one two zero to three significant figures. So there is our answer. It took a bit of thinking about, didn't it, to uh, come to that. It ended up with this big multiplication at the end. Unfortunately, quite a few people ended up summing stuff together instead of multiplying stuff. And I think I had one person in each class who slightly misinterpreted the question as being a question that was asking for two probabilities. So I, I think in one, one in each of the classes that I did, I had somebody work out the probability that he wins his third ticket on the ninth attempt, and then as a separate answer, the probability that he wins his fourth ticket on the twelfth attempt. And, and I can see that there is a slight ambiguity in the way that that's written. I can understand you making that mistake. Um, and actually, somebody in my other class, I can't remember who it was, worked out both of those as separate probabilities, and then worked out the probability of both of them happening together, and hedged their bets and said, take your pick about which of these three answers you want to be the right answer. And, and I actually gave them all the marks because they had clearly indicated the answer that we were looking for, and what the answer that we were looking for meant. So even though there was this extra working that wasn't particularly helpful, they had clearly indicated the right things that they got to. Um, so there is a, maybe there's a message in there that if you are unsure, answer everything, but make it really clear what each answer means. And if you do that, if it's clear what each answer means, then you get credit for the answer that they're asking for. And that's maths.